What's going on guys? The Iron King here, back with another Dragon Ball The Breakers video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the 10 passive skills that you need before season two starts. So let's get into the menu and see the passive skills. Now the first one, I feel like hands down, which is the best passive skill in the game, is the barrier auto recovery. If you don't know what this passive does, basically, if you take damage, you'll be in this red state, like your character will glow. And if you take one more thing of damage, whether it's melee, whether it's a super attack, whether it's a raw key blast, you will be downed. And what's great about barrier or recovery is that if you, tr uh, you know, go into your transfer, if you use an active skill, if you basically escape the raider and don't die after you lose your barrier, you will recover your barrier after a short amount of time. Um, and you don't take any damage. So basically, as long as you escape the raider consistently, and you find yourself doing that. I mean, you're going to get your barrier back and no problem. Like if you max this ability out, you'll be surprised how quick you'll get your barrier back. Now, if you don't have this uh, passive ability equipped, you'll have to look for um, these blue little containers that basically get your barrier back. And I'm telling you, bro, I don't know. I don't know if it's just bad luck. I don't know if it's karma. I don't know what it is, bro. I swear, if I do not have this passive ability equipped, I never fucking find the little um, container things that give you your barrier back. So that's why I really recommend this um, ability. That way you never have to worry about that. So moving on, this ability is kind of contingent on you equipping the Bulma bike or the capsule wheel, single wheel motorbike, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, you'll want this ability. Basically, that makes that ability work to the best that it can. You will dust raiders, no problem, whether they're level one, level two, level three, you might have trouble depending on what raider they are, but you will dust raiders, guys. You will dust raiders. So if you, you don't necessarily need to max this out. If you have it at uh, level 10, you should be fine, but you definitely need this ability because I think it's just gonna age very well whenever you're using vehicles or active skills that technically are vehicles. So definitely I would consider getting this passive skill. Now, moving on, this is an ability that I pretty much have had equipped since the game released, is the VIP Special. I believe this ability is on a couple of transfers. I think it might be on 18, but it's a very, very good passive skill. Uh, the soda machines, I feel like a lot of people sleep on them. You can get um, cooldown drinks, you get uh, dragon change power, and you get rockets. I understand that rockets might not be the most attractive thing to buy as opposed to the cooldown drinks and the uh, dragon change power but rockets are actually pretty important to buy when you're in those scenarios where the uh the raider is destroying the super time machine and you don't have your dragon change you don't have any active skills you could use a rocket to stun the first sec and kind of just give you that split second to maybe get the super time machine to start and of course uh the cooldown drinks are as are expensive as fuck dude you are going to need vip special to uh purchase uh cooldown drinks 100 percent and it's always good to be able to get the uh the dragon change power in the machines as well just to get your uh, levels up as fast as you can now moving on this might be a uh, controversial pick kind of in my own personal community just because uh some people think you're kind of a wuss if you have sos just because if you have this equipped it kind of implies that you plan on uh not really winning and kind of just like escaping after the super time machine is destroyed but it is a very very powerful ability in the sense that if you get to one of the beacons and the raider is a good bit away you're escaping dude like sos makes the the, the escape time machine spawn so fast dude especially after the buff that they did that makes it call faster in general and combination with sos maxed out dude You'll, you'll literally hit triangle, be on the escape of time machine, and be on your merry way. Uh, it's definitely a, an ability that's never going to age, right? Because the escape time machines are always going to be part of the game. Unless there's a raider that disables them somehow, I don't know. SOS is always going to be in play. All right, moving on. This is actually an ability that I didn't think I'd care for that much when it originally released. But it's really, really grown on me. Midder Jump. Midder Jump is really, really good. Uh, obviously, it gives you a secondary jump after your first one. And what it doesn't show you in this video is that it's very, very good for climbing. If you've ever seen any of my YouTube videos, you see me spamming the jump button while I'm climbing. That way you're not fucking slowly like scaling a wall. You can just mash the jump button and then get up uh, a, a mountain very, very quickly. So Minor Jump, honestly, for that reason alone, I think is very, very useful. Is this an ability that you need to max out? 
no. I think if you master it, you're fine. But I feel like it's just an ability that's really, really, I don't know, it's just good, dude. And it's something that is going to age very well. And honestly, I feel like it should be a part of the, the Survivor's kit just in general. I don't really feel like it should be an ability, but it is what it is. I really, really enjoy it. And when I don't have it, I feel like I'm missing something. So I highly recommend Midair Jump. Now, this is an ability that I feel like is very good as well. And if you um, have not played the game for a minute, there is this 100 day celebration going on, which you can get special service with a guaranteed ticket. Special service allows you to get your dragon change faster. Now, unfortunately, special service isn't really at its best until it's maxed out. Um, so when you end your transformation, you'll start at 0%. But with special service, you can either start at 3%, 6%, or even 9%. So when you have it maxed out, you're at 9%, and then when you have it at 10, I believe it's 6, and then when you have it at base, it's 3. So sometimes, dude, this has been the difference between me getting my dragon change back and killing the raider or stopping him this, from destroying the super time machine. And it's really, really good if you're um, like having a world champion's daughter or a VIP special and getting a lot of sodas, because it just means that you'll have to drink less sodas since you're getting your dragon change back faster um uh, with special service so i think it's an ability that will age well and in combination with other potential future passive skills that give you your dragon change back it could be even better so moving on this is an ability that i personally don't use but i feel like you guys could uh get some use out of if you're really uh you know an enjoyer of using the radars radars uh radars are actually very very important because, you know, it's the difference between finding all the keys, finding all the Dragon Balls, and finding civilians so the Raiders don't get free evolution power. So, if you get, like, a level 1 um, Dragon Radar and you have the Radar Boost, it's basically going to be, like, a 1.5, right? So, this is really good if you like to be somebody that likes to um, get the rest of the materials for your fellow survivors. And, of course, there's always times where, like, you got all the keys and you're missing the key for that one area. And with this radar boost, it'll help you pinpoint where that key is or Dragon Balls if you're looking for Dragon Balls. So I feel like this is definitely a useful ability to have before Season 2 starts. And again, this is kind of a passive ability that I feel like shouldn't really be a passive. Probably should just be part of the Survivor's Kit. Like, I wish you could just hit L3 and just sprint. But uh, no, it's a passive skill. So I feel like in terms of age, sprint will be very good. And I feel like... You do need this just because um, if you don't have other passive skills, this could help just traverse the map faster. And it's just, it's better than running. You know what I mean? It's better than running. So in terms of passive abilities, I do think uh, Sprint is good to go. Also, there is another passive skill that I did want to bring up that I don't use, but I see a lot of other players using. Um, so you could actually instead of a sprint honestly you might even want to just use this ability uh the hovering device so the hovering device as you see here basically lets you like kind of float in the air but if you jump and uh use the float hovering device for like a second it actually gives you a little burst of speed and instead of having sprint eclipse you could also have hovering device personally i think i prefer oh uh, excuse me <laughs> i think i prefer hovering device but to each their own i just wanted to mention it here now, besides those two abilities, the one I wanted to mention is one that I feel like will age very well down the line, and it is I'm a bit stronger than you. So, like Special Service, this is an ability that gets you your dragon change back faster, but this one is contingent on you being near the raider. So, if you are near the raider, I've noticed, like, uh, I have this ability at level 13, but I've also had it, you know, mastered at level 10. If you're near the Raider and you have this at level 10, you'll be getting uh, your Dragon Change percentage back by a second. So, like, say you have it by zero, every second you're by the Raider, it'll go one, two, three, and you'll get it back fairly quick. So, if you're in a situation where you can be, like, say the Raider is de destroying the Super Time Machine, if you could be near the Super Time Machine in, like, a safe position, you could kind of like sneak in your dragon change back with this ability and with sos you'll be getting your dragon change pretty quickly so i feel like this is an ability that will age well in combination with other passive skills that will give you your dragon change back assuming they make more so we'll see what happens there and the last one 
I unfortunately can't even show you guys, but it, I, it exists in the game. I'm gonna have to go to the banner here to show this one, and it's World Champ's daughter. It's uh, the Dell's passive skill. Um, I unfortunately do not have it, but I do think it is one that you guys, let me find it first. All right, so it's right here, World Champ's daughter. It's a 0.769% rate. So unfortunately not that high, but uh, basically you don't know what it does. At base, it gives you 3,000 zenny for free. I think when you master it, it gives you 6,000. And then at max, it might give you 9,000. Or it might have a reverse. I think it might, base might be 6,000, then 9,000, then 12. But anyway, you start off with a lot of zenny. And if you combine this ability with VIP special, you will basically be Bill Gates in Dragon Ball Legends. Or Dragon Ball Legends. Dragon Ball the Breakers, you will be rich. You will never need to pick up a single piece of Zenny ever again. So yeah, guys, those are the passive abilities that I feel like you should have or need uh, before Season 2 starts. Uh, let me know if there are any that I missed, but I feel like I covered uh, the passive skills that you need pretty well, but let me know in the comments, again, if there's any I missed. If you liked the video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe for more Dragon Ball the Breakers content. Whether it's updates, news, funny moments, I got you. Peace, guys. Catch you in the next one.